So that's the mono and karaoke tab. And now we're going to go into the EQ tab. And what EQ is, that stands for equalization. And just like in your car stereo, it has bass, middle, and treble usually. Or sometimes it'll say like classical, jazz, rock, rap. And it'll change the sound based off of the kind of genre that you're listening to. And what that's doing is it's increasing different levels of the bass or the treble and different areas of the sound. It's boosting certain frequencies so you hear more or less of those things. They have different presets here. So what you can do is go through these and try to find the one that's closest to what you need and then tweak it by hand from there. Let's say I liked that and I wanted to save that preset for future use. I can select this save here. And hit OK. And now that preset is here. I don't want that so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I've already created a preset here and so I'm double clicking on it. I could say load but instead of doing that I just double click on them. These presets here are available in any song so every song I open up it'll have this blower's daughter preset here. Don't want to have 2000 different EQ settings but use them however you will. Okay so let's hear how this EQ now sounds. And here it is without the EQ. And here it is again. I increase the volume a little bit to counteract some of the taking out the different sections. And you can hear now much clearer what the rhythm guitar is doing. Of course, it's not perfect. You have to, you know, still train your ear to listen for things a little more clearly. However, it's a lot easier to hear than the original. So let me turn off the EQ and mono. And you can hear how much the rhythm guitar there is buried to where we got it. So that's a little bit about using the EQ and the tuning. All we have left now in the effects box is the tuning and transposition tabs. The tuning is a really useful one which allows you to change the pitch of the track. So over here we have the semitones. Each semitone is a half step in music terms. So this is a half step higher now, which is on the guitar the distance of a single fret, or on the piano, usually from a white key to the nearest black key, that is a half step. So you can detune or adjust the pitch as you will here. There's the original. And I can turn the tuning on and off here. And down here below, I have the tuning slider here. And these are my semitones here. So I'm two half steps or one whole step low. Here I am at standard. And here I am a full step or two half steps above standard. Two semitones high. So then we also have synths over here, and that's a fine tuning. If the original song is recorded a half step low, so that your strings instead of being E, A, D, G, B, E, are E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E flat, instead of having to retune your entire guitar, you can come in here and then just click up one semitone and now the track will sound as though it were a half step higher and in standard tuning so that way you don't have to retune your guitar 
or vice versa if your guitar was in E flat and the song is not it's in standard you can detune it like that or if you happen to not have your capo and it's usually recorded out capo third fret and you don't have one you could always bring it down three semitones like that and that will help you counteract or if you're trying if you're a vocalist and you're trying to figure out what key to perform something in you can use this to help you find that the synths can be useful you know if you have a piano and it's a little bit out of tune from the track you can use this to adjust that because obviously it's a lot easier to do this than to tune an out of tune piano and just like i showed you before you can hit your bypass up here or bypass there and that's really it as far as the tuning goes. And then we have transposition. Uh, this does not affect the audio. It doesn't affect the pitch playback. And it gives you a little note warning you of that. This is for transposing instruments such as the trumpet, saxophone, French horn, and things like that. If you know about a transposing instrument, if it's something you would use, then that's there available most of us won't be using this feature very often. Okay, I want to add a couple things that I should have included before but forgot to. And I'm using the song Driftwood by Phil Kagi, and that's off his album Freehand. So one thing you can do, besides just dragging and selecting an area like this, if you hold down the Shift key and click, it will add areas, or you can take away areas, and it'll keep the original points, so you don't always have to try to do that. You can uh, adjust the bounds like that just by holding down the shift key and clicking. Or you can just click somewhere and then hold shift down. And now that whole area is selected. So that's a real nice way of increasing or decreasing the area of a selected area. Okay, besides that, you can also use this text area to store tabs. And when you do that, I would recommend changing the color to white. And then you'll have to delete off some of this extra. And these right here, if you haven't done text tabs before, those are just the dash key, which is in between the zero and the equal sign on your keyboard. And once you're done, click OK. It's going to look ugly at first. You have to just adjust the size of your text area. And there we go. And now... Now have a little bit. And that's that. So that is a lot of the features in Transcribe. It's not all of them. There's plenty more that you can still do with it. There are also custom script on the seventh string uh, web page. There's all kinds of tutorials and stuff, uh, so you should visit there. I'll include a link again on my web page and on the YouTube description to their website. And that's really it. So thank you very much for watching. Oh, one last thing before I sign out. The one thing I would like to see Transcribe do in the future that it doesn't do is an incremental change in speed. So so that each time the loop plays back, it could change in speed. I did talk to the guys at 7th String about that, and they said that there is a custom script that does something similar to that that you can download from their website, but it is not natively supported within this version. So who knows, maybe in the future versions they'll do that, and I would love to see that happen. But other than that, that's it for this video, and thank you for watching. Please stop by my webpage, strumpatterns.com, and that's me, Darren, signing out.